Pete, thanks for joining us again. Um, it's been, well, we're well into our fifth week now of the managerial search. What is the latest? Well, I'm disappointed I couldn't come out last week and tell you what was going on because it was my plan to give everybody a weekly update with where we are. Now, I can never give anybody details. Um, obviously, I'm doing quite a lot. My frustration is I'm being very busy. I do know the clock is ticking. And, of course, results on the pitch in the last few weeks have not been encouraging. Um, I am under pressure. Um, I do want to try and do something sooner rather than later. But I made clear that this is a massive appointment for the club. This is the equivalent of a high new chief exec. He's the person responsible for football at the MK Dons. And we've spent a lot of years now trying to get that really quite well worked out. So we've got pathways, the development works, all of those things. So I'm trying to make sure I do a really good job. And that also, I don't leave any stone unturned. I don't want to be in a position where I've hired somebody and will always have thought to myself... Maybe I should have met that other person. Maybe I should have investigated that further. Um, I've had some amazing things uh, come to me. We were a different club maybe than we were in the past in that so many people have taken us so seriously. And, and, and that's fantastic. But it's actually been quite a burden because some of those things you absolutely have to investigate, even though they're, they're a wild card. They're, they're not likely to be able to come off. And all the time, what we're really trying to find if somebody's going to take the club forward, somebody's going to build on the hard work that's been there, but reverse our fortunes on the pitch at the moment and get us going back in the right direction. I think it's a fantastic challenge. I've been able to sell that challenge to a few people, and, and I know the interest that we've had um, in the job, as I say, is, is phenomenal. Until I've finished the process, until I've made sure that we couldn't have done this and that wouldn't have worked and that isn't the right one, as soon, until I've done that, I don't want to make that appointment. And I know that's really frustrating. And I can tell you that's really stressful for me. But at the same time, this is about our club. It's about getting it right. It's about doing it the MK Don's way. We have a DNA and a philosophy that I've been explaining to people um, over the last few weeks. And you know what? I believe it myself. So that's where we've got to try and stay. And uh, I know that Richie is looking forward to tomorrow. Very disappointed because I thought the team really worked for him so hard on Tuesday and our fragility showed again. Um, tomorrow, I know he's going to go and try and win that game in Coventry. And if we can win, maybe we can all relax a little bit more. Um, if we don't, then I think that really stacks the pressure up again for an early rather than later decision. So I do know where I am, Anthony. Um, you know, I, I, I've not got my head in the sand. I'm not dithering around thinking, ooh, this, ooh, that. You've seen in the last week or so some of the, the, the some of the people that I've been able to, you know been able to meet and been able to talk seriously about our club uh, and about whether that might be the right fit for them. Um, there have been some amazing meetings in my book. Um, one day when I can tell all, you know, people will see that there's been a few amazing little journeys and, and the way that we've got there and uh, and everything else. And I think people would then understand why I'm making sure I take my time. But it never misses me that we've got to do the right thing if we can. Um, and whatever we do, it's a statement to football. Um, it's making sure that you know, we can find a way of taking the club forward in the way that our club is, in, in our style, in our way. You know, lots of managers have been mentioned with us. And, and they could do potentially a really good job with us. But they don't fit. And, and, and I think that fit is really, really important for us. We're a new club. We're a young club. And, and I think if we can just... Uh, keep our, you know, keep our sense of calm and, and, and keep our sense of, of objectivity when everything around is really, really fluid. Um, I, I think that says more about us rather than less. But I can assure every supporter out there, I hope you can see, no one is taking it more seriously than me. Maybe too seriously. You know, managers, what, last 10 months nowadays on average or whatever. And, you know, and people would say, well, Pete, you might be making another decision by the summer. What's the problem? Get on with it. But it's not our way. Our way is to try and do something that is more long-term, that sits more with our philosophy, more with our DNA of what we're about as a club, trying to be innovative, trying to do new things, trying to push the boundaries, trying to be expansive, play interesting and, 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 and good football. Um, and having to treat all those traits as important, that, that does make it more difficult, that search. It isn't as obvious as, as, as championship manager probably makes you feel it could be. Um, so I ask everybody to bear with me. Uh, no one cares about the club more than I do. 
Uh, I'm not blind. I can see that we need leadership at the club. Um, absolutely clear with that. Um, but I also know that I've got people doing their best and that their best is good enough for me at the moment um, until we can get that right appointment. Can you understand the fans' frustration, though, Pete? I know you, talked, you touched on it about wanting to make the right appointment, but there are fans out there that have seen, obviously, other clubs come in and, and they've appointed managers in, in the same space of time that, that we've been searching. So can you, you understand the frustration? That's coming from that? I absolutely get it, and don't think I don't feel that myself. You know, No one wants a manager sorted out quicker than me, but we are different to those other clubs. Those other clubs, they're, they're appointing their 120th manager, and in some cases it's you know, five managers in the last two years. Or, but that's not our way. Everyone knows that's not our way. When we lose a manager, normally it's because they've gone on to a bigger club. And I don't even mind that because that's at least taking our football philosophy and, and our culture out into wider football. It's good news, not bad. Um, other than that, we want to be long-term because we want to be building things. The next few years of this club's development are crucial and are probably the most exciting time since we moved into this stadium. This stadium has taken 10 years to do instead of three. We've still got big pieces left to do. The training ground. Um, you know, yeah, you've been talking about that for years. But yeah, again, because you've got to get it right. You get one chance to do it, and it's got to be great. It's got to be a Category 1 level. It's got to be able to deliver everything the first team needs. And not just at League 1 level. It's got to do it at a level synonymous with the stadium, which is Premier League level. Now... Pete, you've been taught, how are you ever going to get it to the Premier League? I, I understand all those logics. And there might be many different ways we have to look at before we find the journey to actually get there. But let there be absolutely no doubt from anybody. I haven't done any of this for a third division football club. We haven't spent every bit of waking time and effort on finishing this stadium to the quality that it is at 30,000 if you're not trying to be in the Premier League. You mentioned the, the time frame of the end of November. That is fast approaching. Do you know the name of the new MK Dons manager as we sit here today? Well, I think I do, Anthony. Um, I, I think I know who I want, who is the most likely person to end up being able to make a deal with and make it actually happen and turn it into real life. Um, I think I do. Um, there's still a couple of things that are going on which are extraordinary things um, that might cloud my judgment and my view. And that's why I haven't brought any of it to a head yet. What you have to have, and people that do deals in life will know this, you have to, things have to juggle. You have to have a few things going on at any one time uh, to know that one of those will land. And what I can tell you is the things I've got going on at the moment, um, I'm pretty comfortable if any of those things happen. They're, they're all on our original, you know, our target. It's not the people that have come to us, but what we would have thought about, you know, when we've suddenly made that big decision after six and a half years. You know, when you come back, what are you thinking? What are you looking like? And on that first list is still the most likely people. But let me finish my process, because as I've said, there's a couple of things that if they were able to happen, you know, uh, and we've seen one of those, actually. We've seen one of those. We all know what one of those was. You know, they are so extraordinary that actually that changes your view, would tell you to take more risk than you might otherwise have done. But as you investigate and explore those things and the, the practicalities become much less certain, then, if anything, it kind of strengthens you on, 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 your, on your kind of initial thoughts and direction. Um, but I want to get there in that right way because I don't want to do something. Maybe it works or it doesn't work, but I'm always thinking I maybe should have seen something else out. Or, you know, and other people will say to me, God, you had the child. Why didn't you do that? You know, you must have been mad. You know, and you can understand that I've got, you know, <laughs> hundreds of agents and managers got my phone numbers texting me going I'm going mad you know putting fantastic pitches in for us you know people that will work for nothing and you know all of that kind of thing but you know what it's about trying to get the right person um, and I think I know who it is um, and I hopefully will be able to tell you before the end of next week um, but until things are done they're not done and so I'm pragmatic enough to know never to be certain um, but to explain as I'm going along that I think I'm still within my time frames, I do. If anything changes, I will come out and say, you know, Anthony, the only reason I didn't come out last week with my update was because it was in the middle of the Stephen Gerrard thing. There, I've said it. Okay, I've said it. Um, you know, 
which was amazing moments that then hit the papers. Oh my God, what do we do now? It was embarrassing that it hit the papers. Luckily, nothing else much seems to have hit the papers. Um, and I think we were just unfortunate that that, that did. Half of me is quite pleased at people now, because at least you can say I am doing something, people, you know. But I know that anyone that knows me well knows there is no way that I'm not doing something every second of every day on it. A lot has been made about our appointment in the media. Um, one name in particular, obviously, last week. I think there is a, another frustration from the fans that they feel like they want to know what's going on. And, and we've always been a forthcoming club. We're always quite open in what we're doing. Can you just explain why it's important in some aspects to, to keep things confidential and, and, and things a, do have to stay Anthony, that's things. a perfect example of why I'm not saying anything. In fact, that was one of the most difficult times I've had in football because I have never hidden from the media, from my supporters, from anybody, in all the, even with all the things that we've done, some of which were a hundred times more controversial than appointing a new manager. But when you're dealing with some of the people that I've come across in the last few weeks, um, their representatives themselves, all the things around it, we're in, a, we're in a, a big world at that point, that Premier League world. Um, and it is a different world from what we're used to. Um, you know, and we have to play that with great respect, so I can't come out and tell you what I'm doing, even though, can you imagine how exciting just that one particular <laughs> meeting was? And, and of course, all the build-up to that, and, the, oh, you know, this is, why, this is what has kept me going through the last few weeks. And I know that that void, when you're not able to tell anybody, leaves a vacuum, leaves a hole, and people think, oh, he's doing nothing. No, I'm not doing nothing. And could I really appoint somebody if you could have had somebody like Stephen Gerrard take over at the MK Dons, if that was a possibility? Do I not have to go and look at that as a journey? Even though all the timing doesn't work, we all know that. The odds of it happening are really small. But the contacts that we're making, the, the, the people that I now know and have phone numbers for, you know, that's really valuable for the club going forward because these are people that will always be in senior positions in football. And what we've learned in any business, it's about who you know. And, and I've taken this opportunity to meet a few absolutely great people and a few people that you wouldn't think we'd even be talking to uh, because it's, you know, it's the difference that MK Dons is about. You know, when we appointed uh, Paul Ince, it was, whoa, where did that come from? You know, then we did a Robbie to Matei, went on to win the Champions League with Chelsea as a manager. You know, um, we appointed a 29-year-old pro licence holder in Carl Robinson. And now, thanks to that, lots of other young coaches have got their opportunities. We're already set the standards. As I say, we are not a staging post. We are somewhere where people can have the profile to make their careers. And I want to enjoy that. That's the best part of our football club. And we've got to get it right. Now, normally, if we're in the summer, I can take this time. This is how it happened, you know, how all of those other deals came together. It's because we met loads of people, talked to loads of people, um, made things happen, um, saw how things could come together, all the different routes. And when there's not a game going on, of course, it doesn't matter. The difference this time is that we lost on Tuesday night. We didn't win last Saturday away at Bristol Rovers. Um, and those are the, the, the pressures that are really put on, the same pressures that the supporters feel. We don't want to be supporting our team losing. We're not expecting to lose in this division. We've got a very powerful squad and a very powerful team uh, and we should be able to do better. But I think, again, uh, Richie um, has got that focus. I think we're all seeing the players starting to play for him. There's been a transition in that sense. And I'm wanting him to enjoy getting on with it. I'm, I'm hoping that my stress and pressure of this manager doesn't, you know, it probably is translating in the team. I've tried this week to make a real break from that. Let me get on with what I've got to do. Because... I have to be 100% comfortable. What I'm saying to the managers that I'm talking to, potential managers that I'm talking to, if you cannot be 100% committed to doing it, we cannot do it. And that's because what I've learned in life is that if you're not anything less than 100% commitment, and it's likely to fail. So whoever you're talking to, that's what you need. But it's equally true for us. We have to be 100% committed as well. We have to want to believe in that person, believe in backing what they want to try and do, believe that that will fit into our general philosophy and, and how we work as a football club, can get the most out of the players and the most out of the staff. You know, There's lots of things we want our manager to do. So I'm sorry to go on about it today, but you know, of course I feel it when people, the criticism and the time taking to 
time and sat man got jobs before us and all of those kind of things it just shows that in the past I've made good decisions and, and I want to try and keep that track record going and, and it is difficult in the season it is different it, it has been much more pressure than, 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 than it should be but it's also been pretty amazing MK Dons isn't a little League One football club. We could not be talking to the level of people that we've been talking to if we were a little League One football club. So, OK, at the moment on the pitch we are, and we've got to do something about that. But this isn't about one game, even one season. This is about our club making history, and if we get all of our pieces in place, starting with a new manager, then running through with a new training ground, and then within the next couple of years we can look at how then do we leverage what we're doing to make sure this club is in the Premier League. Because that book I was talking to you about earlier, I can't write it until we get there.